It does kind of flag up that there's a couple of Labour leadership candidates on there. That um, especially Yvette Cooper on the left there seems yeah. she seemed to have made the running a couple of days ago on this. Yeah, although um, actually um, that was contested this evening, wasn't it? Um, yeah. they're, they're fighting over who who led the initiative on this. I, I was the one to, yeah. to to run and run with this issue first. I mean, I think. Andy Burnham, in his defence, I think did bring it up uh, before Yvette Cooper. But Yvette, who's gone on this weird thing that now most of the Labour leadership, uh, pe most people have voted, she started delivering a brilliant speech every week. Did deliver a brilliant speech about the need to, to, you know, to, to take our international responsibilities more seriously, uh, to let in uh, more refugees than we currently are, and to unpick. Because the problem is the government has this target of reducing immigration, which includes people coming here to study, people coming here as refugees, who most of us would say don't really count as uh, immigrants, quote-unquote. Um, and so, yeah, I think Yvette has been the one of the four who's sort of said the most on it. And given, Emily, that the, the, the tide of emotion has turned in this past week, hasn't mm -hmm. it, and in, in how this crisis is being viewed, uh, from a political perspective for her, that hasn't swayed what, what she has done and, and, and what is happening in the Labour leadership, as we saw in the debate this evening. Well, we don't know yet, I suppose, because, I mean, probably more than half have, probably far more than half have cast their votes already. But she does seem to have really changed her game in the last two weeks, really raised her game. And maybe when, if people are thinking about it between kind of the moderates in the race, they might, they might put her first and maybe it'll give her more of an edge. But yeah, this debate earlier, I think there was a lot of love for Jeremy Corbyn. That's, that's not going away. Do you think it's, it's done? I think that it's finished. I think the danger is as bored as we all fall, feel of the Labour leadership race, the members, they've, they haven't even had a break from it. They haven't even gone on holiday. A lot of them have decided they like Corbyn or they've decided they like Burnham or they've decided they like Yvette or they've decided they like uh, Liz Kendall. Uh, and uh, they, uh, they basically made up their mind and no matter what she does now, it's, it's over for her. Okay. Hello, welcome back to the press preview here on Sky News where we're taking a look at the newspapers you'll be waking up to tomorrow morning. I'm joined by BuzzFeed's senior political correspondent Emily Ashton and Stephen Bush, editor of the political blog The Staggers. Welcome back to you both. So let's talk about some political stories, shall we? Uh, Miliband quitting frontline politics. Many will suggest that he perhaps did that the day after the election. Mm. Yeah, now he's kind of quitting again. Um, there was the idea, and he had reportedly told friends, and he liked the idea of an Ian Duncan Smith style return to, you know, shadowing a, a big departmental brief to perhaps rehabilitate himself uh, after what happened in the election. Now, what he's, uh, he's saying is he will rule this out and he will go on to the back benches to campaign on envir environmental issues and inequality issues, the two big things that really animate Ed Miliband. Uh, that's what gets him up in the morning, you know, economic inequality and the threat to our planet of uh, man-made climate change. And he, he, the thing we forget is because he was one of Brown's protégés, he's never actually been on the back benches until now. So it might be the making of him as a politician. He might be more sort of rounded and lose that slightly otherworldly air he had. Mm. Yes, maybe. And, uh, and he was mentioned, wasn't he, in, as part of Jeremy Corbyn's shadow cabinet as, as yeah. a potential shadow energy or shadow environment secretary. But it, I, th I think everybody was finding that quite hard to believe. Um, has he so shown soon. his colours over the, the, the Labour, le Labour leadership? He hasn't, has he? He hasn't said no. anything? No, he's, he's stayed very quiet. He's sort of the only Labour figure from the past not to say don't vote Corbyn, which some have said might be because Has secretly... Has Gordon Brown said that now? Yeah, Gordon Brown, after he did that coded speech, ten oh, days yes, later, said, right, oh, yes. no, I voted for a vet. Mm. <laughs> um, which, you know, might have been more effective if he'd done it when he, he'd given that. Actually, very good speech, but... Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ed Miliband stayed quiet. Some people think that might be because he's a Corbyn Easter in disguise. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, it would be odd to see a former leader in a... In a it would, wouldn't it? I mean, right. maybe he'll come back. So soon. Yeah, so in soon. a I mean, few years. It, do yeah. a William Hague or something. Yeah. I think the thing is, is William yeah. Hague appeared to have engaged a bit with why people disliked him. I think the problem with him, him rattling on about inequality and climate change, which I think are really important issues, but, you know, ultimately I work at the New Statesman. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not one of the swing voters Ed Miliband <laughs> failed to reach out yeah. to. 
looks like he's going to spend the next five years campaigning on the things people didn't want to yeah. hear him talking about. And then maybe, about. As, yeah. as with Ian Duncan Smith, and they, yeah. a, a, a little while later come back into yeah. mm. front, front line And the politics. thing I want to know is, will he keep that beard? Did you see yeah. the picture? Yeah, the, yeah. the old yeah. stubble. I wonder well, if he'll keep it. Jeremy Corbyn-esque. Exactly. OK, while, while we're on the su subject of Jeremy Corbyn, uh, did you watch the debate tonight? Did yeah. you? Yes, yeah. what did change, they Change of views, reinforce views? I they? think they were saying such similar things as to what they've been saying already, but um, um, Jeremy Corbyn once again grabbing the audience. Um, and Yvette kind of coming into her own right at the end, which mm. is kind of a metaphor for the whole contest, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but and I thought Liz Kendall actually did very well. Yeah, I think kind of it was like the contest in miniature. Jeremy Corbyn getting all of the applause lines, doing very well. Andy Burnham kind of saying whatever he thinks might get him a round of applause at any given moment. Liz Kendall saying what she thinks very eloquently, but it's bombing with, uh, with Labour activists. And uh, Yvette right near the end suddenly going, oh, wait a second, I'm yeah. in an election, maybe I should do something. Yeah, maybe I should say uh, something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest cheers and actually one of the biggest responses on social media was uh, after Jeremy Corbyn said that he didn't know what was in the sun yesterday because he never bought the sun. Um, so the sun has of course a piece about uh, him in the debate. Yeah. I'll make military history. I mean, he, Well this he was, was a real key moment in the debate yeah. actually wasn't it? It was in the second half I think when Liz Kendall actually said, you know, is there any circumstance in which you would deploy Britain's military forces? And he was really caught on yeah. the hop. Um, and he said, any, I'm sure, I'm sure there are some, but I can't think of any at the moment. Mm. Which, um, and, and it's not often that Jeremy Corbyn is actually put on the spot. Uh, so it did seem like quite a moment. Um, and of course, as soon as he said it, you think, well, that's it. Sun's page two, absolutely sorted. Yeah, absolutely. OK, and what, one week to go, yes. Yeah, one, one week, week to tomorrow. go on Saturday. Uh, OK, inside the Times, um, gender differences.